All right, so let's switch gears a little bit here now. Um, so we've talked about you know the state of MA, how we met. That's uh love love the story. Let's talk about getting ready for an exit then, right? Um, what should people expect? Now you both have gone through this personally. Um, I would love to hear your experience there. And then let's talk about advice that you have uh for people tuned in thinking, I gotta get ready. Um, whoever wants to start, I'd love to, you know, share your story. Okay. <laughs> no, um, go ahead. I'll try, I'll I'll try and recall all the trauma of <laughs> of exiting exiting your business. So yeah, I mean, I, I think I even wrote it down somewhere. I, of course, I don't have it to hand now, but there were kind of ten major learning points, and maybe I'll write a book or or do something on this one, one day. But but um, I think you, uh, uh, the hardest one is prob probably really really trying to understand uh the why behind it and really knowing what's after it so i think that kind of journey of of grappling with where this sale fits or this exit fits in your life plan um part of it's going to be financial part of it's going to be you know enthusiasm focus family whatever it may be um but really sort of homing in on that um so it really kind of does need to fit fit into place um, and then the second part is really knowing that whatever you think is going to happen won't happen. <laughs> uh, it won't just fit into place like you think it will. How you feel, you will, you won't expect to feel like that. You will feel differently. Yeah. Um, and there's just so many stories out there of people that that just just didn't know how, you know, or didn't don't end up feeling the way they they thought they would. Uh, the financials, you know, don't make up. You're still the same person, right? even though your bank account may be completely different now. Yeah. And so there's some really big questions there, and I, and I wouldn't underestimate the amount of work that needs to go into that. Um, I guess the second point would really be about not underestimating the, the M&A cycle itself and the amount of work that's involved in, in going through it. Um, and, you know, obviously you're party to this, Craig, so you know there's, there's tons of work here in terms of the whole due diligence piece. Um, and... Uh, so really be really make sure you do have that time in your diary uh, that your business can can effectively you know work without you because when you go through that process you're just going to be full time on this really I'd say when it actually gets to the to the the um, the due diligence piece in, you know in particular um, so there's just a couple a couple of snippets I, there's eight more in the bag somewhere that I'll reveal reveal well maybe maybe Dan can reveal some of those yeah. other eight yeah I mean you brought up some good points here you know. For most people, they will only do this once in their life, you know, and I and I try and create this metaphor of, well, I think many of us have sold a house at least once or bought a house at least once. And it's like, you know, that feeling when you're you sign the deal and, and now you're inspecting it. And it's like, you know, that anxiety. Yeah. Times 10. That's what this process could be like. So. Prepare yourself, Dan. You know what was your experience? Um, what should people expect? I think my 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 experience was uh, was probably exactly the opposite of what I would actually advise someone to <laughs> to, to, to to do. Um, and in and in fact, uh, in in the in the early uh, days of uh, when I realised that mentorship was a was an option for for me. Um, uh, uh, I, uh, I I I employed the phrase um, I, I help you make different mistakes to the ones that I made, <laughs> oh. um, and uh, uh, but yeah cer certainly um, uh, I, I would I would absolutely build on what what Adam was saying um, uh, and and uh, and someone we we all know uh, J Jameson West has written a book on this the emotional side of selling a business. Yeah. Um, th there's a there uh, I mean our, our, our listeners to this. Cat cannot um, ever overexpose themselves to to this topic. The more the more you research it, listen, read, uh, watch, um, the 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 better prepared you, um, uh, you know a seller a seller is going to be, and also a buyer is going to going to be a better buyer, understanding where where the seller's coming from. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I think um, uh, uh, the 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 key the key thing for 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 me was that it 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 wasn't wasn't properly planned. Um, uh, uh um we learnt as we as we went through the through the process um i certainly wasn't prepared for for the 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 loss 
um, uh, the mourning period after, and uh, uh, and uh, and that that was made doubly hard by picking uh, a totally bonkers second career to to embark upon um, in the world of motorsport sponsorship, which um, uh, I, I think um, uh, you know there's there's two two mistakes I made, but um, but over the over the last decade. And I think this is the thing for for anyone thinking about selling. Um, the, the 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 sooner you do it, the more time you've got to to, to work on the the next phase of your career of your life and right. really the, the business. It it was my identity. Um, uh, and uh, and you know to 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 remove that, you know you you find you find yourself sort of quite 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 a loan a lost and almost you feel like uh, it was totally the wrong thing to do. Yeah. Um, and I I. I I believe that most buyers have that at some level, uh, you know, seller's remorse is, uh, you know, is a real thing. Um, uh, Equally, there's a thing called buyer's remorse as well. Um, So, uh, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I I think, um, uh, I think the technicalities of it um, that we could, we could probably record uh, hours of uh, uh, footage talking about uh, uh, data rooms and heads of terms and, and share purchase agreements and how to get the best out of your solicitor uh, or your lawyer. Um, you know, all all of those technicalities are are things, areas that should absolutely be, be researched and understood. But the the biggest thing is, uh, why, why you're selling, what you hope to achieve, um, what you're going to do afterwards. And, um, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, and and just being prepared for that. And I think actually, uh, to, to Adam's point earlier, that's a that's another big hole in the in the whole marketplace is the the post M and A support. And 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 I, you know, we've spoken to several people since selling um, who I didn't speak to before. So back to what Dan was saying around seller's remorse. Where were all these people before saying there's such a thing as seller's remorse? I never yeah. found anybody. Now all of yeah. a sudden they're everywhere. So <laughs> so this is really quite fascinating. Yeah. Um, and and you know what Dan has just been talking about, what I've just been talking about, you know, is, is a common common feeling. Um, yeah. And uh, and and it's natural, isn't it? Because you've been working hard on something for 20, 30 years, whatever it is, and then you 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 sell it to someone and it's no longer yours. And there's just yeah. a deep deep emotional connection there that isn't yeah. going to go away overnight and 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 so it's an interesting discussion i think definitely there's room for for more work in this area actually yeah. um within yeah. the community um, I, I, a, a kind of a holistic approach to the MA process right there's the financial nuts and bolts and then there's there's the real stuff that matters yeah I'd like to comment on a couple of these things. Number one, Jameson West, great guy. We well, actually have a video with him talking about the book. Um, he was the first to kind of bring my attention to that a long time ago because um, I've known Jameson. I watched him do acquisitions 2010. He acquired XBAR in Seattle, right? Brad Benner. And then he acquired Seattle Computing and another and another. He was one of the first. Um, great video to watch. Um Second off, uh, I was just recently at an event, and I think a lot of people know Arnie Bellini, and he had a lot to say about, yeah, that business was my identity. And, you know, for a year, I just kind of, he said, I just I just kind of lost myself in beaches, and and he kept being daiquiris and, and uh, <laughs> vacations, and then he said, I just hit a wall. It was about a year in. It was like, yeah. wait. Well, I feel a lot better. I feel a lot better now that you said Arnie Bellini feels like this. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, (laughs) I mean, good company. I mean, let's a lot. I mean, I think people know the details of that deal. One point five billion dollars. I mean, it's not hard to draw a conclusion. Like, I think it goes right back to the common saying money doesn't buy everything. Like. Here's a guy who has everything we could probably possibly ever imagine and here he is telling his journey and story of post and yeah. Um, and so one thing I'd just say is what, it, and I, you know, I'm going to toot the evergreen horn for a minute here. You know, when I was watching a lot of this activity happen, I felt like, man, evergreen has got the best deal going because it's preserving that legacy. So the regret shouldn't be as hard. Cause it's like, yep, I see my business mm-hmm. is still going over there. Yeah. I see my team is still there. My customers are still there. I I'm not gonna bump into them in the grocery store and have them go, "What happened?" You know, it's like. Um, but I will say this: uh, it's timely because we're starting in Evergreen what's called the Founders Club, and we want to address the post acquisition thing. And we're 
inviting all of our founders, whether they're staying in the business or they've retired and moved on. Um, one, we want to create this social environment where, you know, where they can share things, but a support system, um, create mechanisms, create things, create places where people can talk to each other about that part, because for the individual, it is the most important part. We we all know, like, yes, the money's great, having that financial freedom and and removing a lot of that worry is a big deal. But then you're kind of left with, okay, now here I am the person I have to face, you know. Um, that's, so that, that's really, uh, really, really interesting as well that that you guys are are you know getting involved in that actually, uh, yeah. completely worlds apart from, I guess most, you know, um, private equity type buyers <laughs> and, and you know where where the value sets are not necessarily aligned at all. Um, let's be frank, and and you know um, back to what you were saying about um, the meaning that the business has for you. Yeah. Uh, and the meaning it has in the community uh, yeah. at large, and now it's bought by someone else with, with a completely different value set. Um, yeah. yeah, there's some big, big, big questions there. So it's really interesting. Yeah. I know that.